This presentation covers the basic concepts of healthcare environmental disinfection. Every day, physicians and nurses at hospitals face life and death crises, along with many more minor but still unhappy problems. In all cases, environmental services technicians play a major role to reduce the spread of infections in a hospital. That's where you, the hospital's environmental services technicians, come in. Hand washing can stop the spread of infection. Viruses, spores, and bacteria can cause infection, which can be transmitted to patients via body contact as well as contact with external items such as patient care equipment and medical devices. Without professional cleaning, the hospital would not be a safe and healthy place. The cleaning procedures you will be taught are designed to control infectious risks by bringing biohazard counts to safe levels. We will now present some common environmental services cleaning and medical terms to build your understanding of aseptic cleaning. We will start with the word bacteria. These microscopic organisms can multiply quickly if not controlled. These microscopic organisms can be seen only under a microscope. Some are pathogenic, others are infection producing, and some bacteria can be beneficial to mankind. Two common types of bacteria are Staphylococcus aureus, which is frequently found in the human respiratory tract and on the skin. It is a common cause of skin infections, respiratory disease, and food poisoning. And Streptococcus, which can manifest itself as a sore throat and is responsible for many cases of pink eye, meningitis, and bacterial pneumonia. Those are big names for small organisms, especially when you consider that bacteria are so tiny that 10 million could fit on the head of a pin. That's why your cleaning has to be extremely thorough. By the way, a disinfectant is a germicide that is used on material rather than humans. The word disinfectant and germicide mean the same thing. Disinfection describes a process that eliminates many or all pathogenic microorganisms except bacterial spores on inanimate objects. Environmental service personnel can only use EPA-registered, hospital-grade disinfectants. Currently, some EPA-registered disinfectants have contact times of one to three minutes. By law, users must follow all applicable label directions for EPA-registered products. Question. Pathogenic organisms do not cause disease. A. True. Or B. False. If you answered B. False, you are correct. Pathogenic organisms are germs that are harmful to the human body. Always label spray bottles or other secondary containers with chemical content. Never measure chemicals through estimation. Always use measuring devices. Additional information on cleaning chemicals can be found on safety data sheets, which list the ingredients of the chemicals and the possible side effects and antidotes. These are forms required by the Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration's HASCOM standard or your state's right-to-know laws. There are three links to the chain of infection. First, there must be a source of infection. In the hospital, an infected patient can be a major breeding ground for infectious microorganisms, as well as visitors and employees. The modes of infection transmission are bloodborne, contact, airborne, and vectorborne. Next in the chain of infection is the method of transmission. Something or someone must help the bacteria move, and as we said before, bacteria will hitch a ride with anything they touch. The third point in the chain of infection is the susceptible host or person who will become infected. In the hospital, this could be another patient, a staff member, even you. It is not possible to break the chain of infection at the first or third links. Hospitals care for sick people, so there will always be a source of bacteria generated by patients as well as staff and visitors who can also host infection. However, patients can be exposed to infection obtained from poor care procedures, sick care staff personnel, and inadequate cleaning and disinfecting processes. Only the second link, the method of transmission, can be broken.
Through professional cleaning techniques and extra precautionary cleaning measures, such as universal precautions, you can prevent bacteria from spreading and help break the chain of infection. Remember, you're a representative of the hospital as you work. Good hygiene makes you more presentable in your personal contact with others. We constantly work with our hands, so they will become the prime carriers of bacteria. Since person-to-person -person contact is the biggest problem in infection control, correct hand washing can be the biggest asset. Extra precautions must be taken when working in an area of concern and when cleaning high-touch areas. In addition to your clean uniform, you may also be required to wear a special gown, masks, gloves, and possibly a cap and shoe covers. This protective clothing is the same as that worn by doctors and nurses. Remember to remove your protective apparel before you leave the area of concern. You need clean hands to remove your mask. In a hospital environment, there are a number of efficient EPA-registered hospital-grade disinfectants that may be used. Your supervisor will instruct you which one to use and how to use it. But it's also important that your cleaning movements be controlled. You want to eliminate germs, not relocate them. Work efficiently, but carefully. Don't splash any water when mopping floors or scrubbing toilets. You should clean everything in a pattern, clockwise around the room from high places to low places. This is to ensure that nothing is overlooked and that one cleaning task doesn't contaminate another. By carefully following safety procedures, CDC standard precautions, and proper cleaning techniques, you can break the chain of infection. You will be providing every staff member with a sanitary environment in which to work, and you will be aiding patient recovery.